Now I, I called out the uh, finishing of the inside of this door and it being filled with, um, with plastic filler as being, to my knowledge, incorrect. And I, I cannot say for sure what Ferrari's practice was in 1970 making these doors. Certainly they could have put filler there, although I cannot understand why they would do it. But when I look at this at the edge, look at the difference in thickness. Look at that, it's really striking. What that shows you is that the line on the edge of the door is primarily built in plastic, not metal. And, and with respect to the idea that the absence of the seam there is original and correct, well, I mean, the seam is visible on the inside of the door. When we go up here and we look under the hood, we can see where this is folded and welded together. So that's got a seam in the usual way. When we open the trunk, the seam here is clearly visible under the paint. Um, and uh, just looking at, looking at this, looking at this, this is a really kind of obvious example like of the door edge built up with filler. And it's, not that way on the other side of the car. If we uh, look over here, this has its own irregularities in buildup, which are different in every respect from that door. So both doors are built up, the driver door more than the passenger door, but I would contend that this is not something that an automobile manufacturer would normally do. and. It's not something that produces a durable result because when you have this much filler on a car and, and the car is driven and it flexes over bumps, the result is that the filler flexes and cracks. We're told as a BASF glasser at paint shop that 12 mils is the maximum thickness that we can lay onto the metal of a car and We've gotten in a number of spots on this vehicle more than five times that.